I want to talk to you today predominantly about tooling and why we always, almost always go with aluminum temperature controlled tools. Now let me give you a little overview of the whole process of thermoforming real quick. Hi, Bob Carrier, CNK Plastics, second generation owner of CNK Plastics, located in Metuchen, New Jersey, and Conyers, Georgia. Everything in the plastic processing starts with resin. Resin is important from a thermoforming standpoint. You pick out the parameters you'd like for the job, whether you need weatherable, high impact, low impact, UL rated, RF transmission, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not all we're looking for. What we're looking for is a very consistent melt flow. What we need this plastic to be able to do is when an extruder makes it into a sheet, it's got to have some stiffness to it so that the sheet can get, get formed in a very low stress environment. Now there's always going to be stress because you're melting the resin and you're squeezing it out of a barrel into a sheet die that is manipulating the material out to a sometimes eight foot wide sheet and then extruding it down through a series of rollers that cool it and emboss it sometimes. As you can see in this sheet, that's a grain pattern on it. That comes out of the sheet and when we thermoform, we can keep that grain in the process. But when we take this sheet and we irradiate it with IR heaters on the top and the bottom, that we want that melt flow to be consistent so that it sags the same every time. What I mean by sag is that when this sheet goes below its glass transition point, it's no longer solid it's, and it gets to be like taffy and we want a consistent bag that is going to process the same way all the time. That comes to number two on the list. It's very, very important to have good microprocessor controlled heaters. You'll never get a good thermal form part unless you make sure you're heating the core, which means you need to be able to measure the surface temperature of the sheet and know what the soak is of the radiation into the middle of that sheet. Heating an eighth inch piece of material or a one inch piece of material is completely different. We do some one inch material, but you cannot heat that with IR heaters. You have to heat it in a convection oven and then thermoform it. It's all about the core temperature. And plastic is not conductive of thermal energy, so you need to make sure that the radiation penetrates specifically the same way every time, every shot, in order to get a successful part. Now, we put all of this effort into making microprocessor automated production equipment. We at CNK Plastics have lots of machines we have zero sag machines that are shuttle machines. We have lots of single station machines. But what we predominantly use is automatic load and unload rotaries. What's interesting about a rotary is while you're loading and unloading a part, you're heating a part. While you're heating a part, you're molding and cooling a part. So the process takes place all three at the same time. As, as far as a shuttle machine, you heat the part, when it's heated at the temperature, you shuttle it to a molding station, you mold the part, then you cool the part, and then you demold the part, and then you reload the part. If, if it takes three minute cycle, that's three plus three plus one, that's a seven minute cycle. On a rotary, it's going to be a three minute cycle. So if you want to make a part every three minutes, tooling is of utmost importance. So it's really important that you have other process controls within your system. You need to have pyrometers that measure the surface temperature of the material. And a lot of times you use a sag eye. So whenever the, 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 the sag of the bag of the, melt, the glass transition point of the material hits that sag eye, it, it automatically rotates. The biggest fundamental difference between thermoformers today is there's really two classes of thermoformers. The thermoformers that invest in the process and the techniques and builds relationships with their suppliers and those that just buy sheet and process it in old equipment they call it an art it is not an art it is a science it's parameters but the most important difference that separates out class a thermoformers with all the other people is temperature controlled tools this is just a small little casting, but you, these are stainless steel tubes. They are actually embedded in the wall of the casting. Aluminum is very thermally conductive, as we all know. So when we're, we're running temperature controlled water throughout this casting, we're maintaining the, the temperature of this tool 
less than a degree Fahrenheit. Now this is a little tiny tool that I can hold just to show you all. But when you get to big giant tools, especially those that are running semi-crystalline material, and what I mean by that is if you have a temperature gradient of five degrees in, in a truck bed liner, for instance, and you've all seen it where the truck was a different temperature here, the bed liner, than here, you're going to get warping because the crystals, the crystalline structure of the material sets up incorrectly and it warps. Now, not only that, but using a temperature control tool maximizes all of the engineering properties. And what I mean by that is the tensile strength, the notched in impact, the falling dart impact, the modulus of elasticity. All the engineering properties are pretty much from a resin bar that's injection molded and they, they test it. Now we're a lot less stressed than any resin bar that's injection molding. If molded properly off of a temperature controlled tool, you will exceed the properties of the resin that are published. Period. It's an absolute fact. Now, there's a lot of tools out there and people try to use wood tools, real old school, ceramic tools, polyurethane tools, they're using a lot of printed tools. You need a, a, a highly conductive material so you can get the heat out of the material the same way every time. That's why we, we tend to go with castings. Now you can also do aluminum tools and if you gun drill the aluminum tools and you manifold the aluminum tools with, with cooling lines, you get a really good cool temperature control tool. And shallow tools that have a lot of shop corners and you're going to have an aggressive pattern on, so you're going to etch the tool, uh, an aluminum billet machine is probably the way to go. But the least expensive and the most competitive way to make a first class tool is you, you make a casting. You do not want to do a plaster casting. You do not want to do a green sand casting. You want to do no casting processes that use any water whatsoever. Because water, when it gets heated up into the anywhere near the temperatures of aluminum, vaporizes and it creates porosity. So you want to make sure you have a low porosity casting. If you have a high porosity casting, the porosity gets to the surface and you can get imperfections. We battle this all the time. Well, how come your tools are 20 or 30 percent more money than the other guys? And they say their ceramic tools or urethane tools work better or just as good as aluminum temperature controlled tool. Plain and simply, it's all false. It's all smoke and mirrors. You want to have a part that's repeatable, be able to make parts every two minutes the same now and five years from now off that same tool that will last forever because of the, there's very low stress. So it's not like, you know, thousands of PSI like in an injection molding process. It's only 14 PSI if vacuum formed and maybe at most 90 PSI if you're pressure forming. So we at CNK always insist upon aluminum temperature controlled tools and sometimes we don't win the jobs, but we think it's more that we're not educating people as to the benefits of aluminum temperature controlled tool. So you're wasting your money if you, you spent millions of dollars on process controls and process equipment and you don't spend a couple thousand bucks to make a good temperature controlled tool. Thank you. I hope to hear from you all.